What's the matter, Rigsby? Shh. Rigsby, I'm busy. Shh. I'm trying to avoid someone. I think he's from the council. What makes you think that? Oh, I know the type. He's got those hunched shoulders from crouching over figures all day and those long, bony fingers you get from squeezing blood out of a stone, you know. Why should that worry, unless you're hiding something? Of course I'm not hiding anything. My conscience is clear. Needn't worry about that. God, he's coming up. <laughs> look, look, if he asks for me, I'm the window cleaner, all right? Thought you had nothing to hide. I haven't. Haven't you paid your rates, Rigsby? Who said I haven't paid my rates? You watch your tongue. I'm in dispute. I'm over-assessed. I'm a poor man. I'm the window cleaner. <laughs> Excuse me, my name is Snell. Well, we've all got problems. <laughs> yes, I'm looking for Mr Rigsby. Oh, Mr Rigsby, I've just missed him. I'll leave your card, but tell him you called. Well, I haven't got a card. Oh, no card. It could be anyone. <laughs> hey, Philip, keep your eye on the silver. What do you want to see Mr. Rigsby for? No, it's a, it's a personal matter. You can tell us where his friends. Oh, no, no, I couldn't possibly tell his friends. You see, it's strictly confidential. It must be kept within a very small circle. His friends are a very small circle. <laughs> no, no I'm, I'm sorry, it's of a financial nature. Oh, yes, I thought fine now. I thought so. Just dropped in for a little chat, have we? What have you got in that bag? Your thumbscrew? A big fuck. <laughs> Why can't you leave him alone persecuting an old man like this? A man who's left his health and strength on the beaches of Dunkirk. <laughs> I really don't think And what are you doing about the rats? You tell me that. Rats? The rats, yes, the rats, the rats. They're getting bolder every day. You ask him across the road, the fellow with the wooden leg. <laughs> Sitting there reading his newspaper, he hears this gnawing sound, stands up, collapses in a pile of sawdust. <laughs> and what are the council doing about it? Nothing. No, I really think you must be mistaken. I am not from the council. Oh, sorry. I'm from Hargreaves, the solicitors. I've come to see Mr. Rigsby regarding the estate of his late uncle, George Rigsby. You mean he's been left something? Uh, yes, he gets the residue of the estate. Is it much? Oh, it's a considerable sum. What would you call a considerable sum? Yeah, well, a figure not unadjacent to £50,000. £50,000. That's a considerable sum. Yes. I, I do hope it won't be too much of a shock for Mr. Rigsby. I have here some... He's <laughs> <laughs> in the money! He's got the residue! You hear that? Oh, he's got the residue as the padded seven. He's had on the big shoulder. He's got the residue! He's got the residue! He's got the residue! <laughs> Mr. Rigsby, I presume. Uh, yes, how'd you guess? Well, I think it was your natural display of grief on hearing of your uncle's death. Yes, yes, oh, very sorry about that. Yes, oh, oh, dear, oh, yes, poor Uncle George. Oh, very tragic. Uh, no, dear, I hope it was peaceful. Yes, you know, I hadn't seen him in years. Oh, I wish I had. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to throw myself at that man's grave and beg his forgiveness. Well, I wouldn't advise that, Mr. Rigsby. We've just scattered his ashes on the Mersey. <laughs> I'll leave you with the necessary papers. Oh, yes, yes, And then perhaps so when you've recovered from your grief, yes. you can call in at the office and advise us on how we should deal with the money. Oh, just bundle it into five as I'll do the rest. <laughs> oh, yes. oh, and here, since you called with the, uh, with the good news, there's uh, uh, something for your bus fare. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, I shall. <laughs> Congratulations, yeah. Rigby. Cause for a celebration. Yeah. Sit down. Have a drink. 50,000 nicker. What about that, eh? Oh, God. oh wait, wait a minute. Wait, oh, wait a minute. Started already, as if. Oh. What do you mean? Oh, sit down, Rigsby. Have a drink. I wouldn't have anything to do with the money, would it? Certainly not. Rigsby, you oh, think oh, I'm after oh, your money? Sorry, sorry, Phil. Sorry, I shouldn't have said that to you. I'm sorry. But you can see why I'm worried. I mean, now, once the news gets out, they'll all be around, won't they? Who will? Well, all of them. The, the fortune under the fast women, the double glazing people, they'll all be after <laughs> They're not getting it, though, not a penny. It's mine. I've waited too long for this. 50,000. <laughs> yes, you'll have to be careful, Rigsby. Yes. Yeah. I mean, what about the begging letters? I shouldn't worry, Rigsby. I'd keep writing them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One less for the champagne reception. Oh, hey, fair, hey, rich. <laughs> rich, rich, rich. <laughs> Money's the root of all evil. Money's the root of all evil. Won't contaminate myself with it. Give it to me. Give it to me. Give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, I, these cat hairs get everywhere. Listen, mate, if you don't stop moulting, I'm going to give you a coat of varnish, all right? <laughs> and don't look at me like that. No-one's indispensable. If you're not careful, you might find yourself replaced by blue Persian. Someone more in keeping with my status. Yes? Morning, Mr. Ritchie. Morning, My, we do look smart this morning. Thank you. So, do you stand here? Yes. Yes, you've heard about my good fortune, I take it, Miss Charles? Oh, yes, Mr. Rigsby, and I must say it couldn't have happened to a nicer person. I quite agree. Well, I haven't much time for chit-chat this morning, Miss Jones. Mr. Rigsby has a rather urgent appointment with his tailor. Oh, I thought you always went to that man in the market, the one by the hot dog stall. The one by the hot... Miss Jones! 
I'm having a bespoke hacking jacket, cavalry twills, a yellow waistcoat and a tie with fox's heads on it. Ooh. You think I'm going to some herbert who stands by the hot dog stall? You're very much mistaken. Besides, all this stuff smells of onions. I must say, it's very exciting seeing you rise in the world like this. Yes, it is. I quite agree. I don't suppose you have any time for me now. Nonsense, Miss Jones. I've always got time for you. <laughs> Glitch up five minutes. Thanks very much. Uh, <laughs> yes, what is it? I was it? wondering, since you've yes. come into this windfall, mm -hmm. if I could have a new carpet for my room. New carpet, Miss Jones? What's wrong with the coconut matting? Oh, nothing, Mr. Rigsby. It's very comfortable. It's just that it leaves these little red rings on my knees. Mm -hmm. I thought if I had something like this... Tufty pile with foam underlay. Oh, you mean this one with the young couple lying across it in their underwear? Yes. Yes, yes, yes well, you certainly couldn't do that on coconut, Maddy. <laughs> <laughs> you get red rings everywhere. <laughs> Especially the lady. No, uh, you weren't thinking of indulging in this sort of thing, were you, Miss Jones? No, certainly not, Mr. Rigsby. I just wanted a bit more comfort. No, I mean, you don't want to think carbon, Miss Jones, are full of static electricity, very dangerous. Why do you think they're sprawled out like that? Probably been electrocuted. <laughs> <laughs> If I let you have a fitted carpet, Miss Jones, they'll all want one. But, Mr. Rigsby, I, Mr. Rigsby, I thought that I was just a little bit special. Don't wheedle, Miss Jones. <laughs> no, there was a time when I used to pay you more attention, but uh, not now. I just don't have the time, Miss Jones. Uh, women just won't leave me alone these days. Really? Yes, the woman at the wet fish stand's been making eyes at me yet again. Thinks she fancies me. Perhaps she was looking for stock? Yes, but... <laughs> She's probably heard about the money, Mr. Rigsby. No, no, she said she thought I was cracking. Oh, really? Where? <laughs> oh, Vienna, Vienna, envy, envy, eaten away by it, you see. Now, uh, Phil? Um, what's the matter with Ruth? Oh, a woman scorned, Phil, you know how it is. I'm moving in different circles these days, love. Uh-huh. Yes. Uh, Rigsby? Yes? I was thinking, now you've got some money. <clears throat> what about a heated towel rail for the bathroom? A heated what? A heated towel You're rail. getting no heated towel. You, you won't be... You spend far too much time in that bathroom as it is. You won't be satisfied as it's like Equatorial Africa in there. <laughs> you can afford it. Oh, I can afford... Is that my old rigs? We can afford everything. Fitted carpet, heated towel... Who oh, could look at this? Matching sweet in Aztec gold, hand-painted mosaic tiles, easy flow shower unit in aquamarine, sepia tinted mirror. <laughs> sepia tinted. What do you want with sepia tinted mirror? <laughs> You'd never see yourself. You're just too mean, Rigsby. All I wanted was a towel ring. What's the matter? We burnt our bub on the palafins room again. <laughs> yes? Ask Mr. Snell, come in, come in. Has the, has the money come through then? No, no, Mr. Rigby, I'm afraid there's been a complication. Oh, it's not a mistake. I couldn't oh, bear it. No, 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 no. It's just a condition that I should have mentioned. Oh. It's a formality. Oh, it's fine it's print. Oh, the fine print. Oh, nothing serious. Oh, oh no. Oh, good. <laughs> well, as you know, your Uncle George Rigsby was a happily married man. Yes, yes, his wife had been dead for years. Yes, yes. <laughs> Still, he had fond memories. Oh, yes, yes, yes. And he'd lived to see the marriages of his close relatives, a founder on the rocks of Acton. Money and discord. Yes, it's most distressing. Yes, yes. yes. Well, and that's the condition you see. I see. Yes. <laughs> that you, you also should be happily married. Uh, <laughs> you what? <laughs> and your aunt Maud, one of the executors, is coming here tomorrow to ensure that the condition is fulfilled. Only then can we release the money. Aunt Maud, that old back, but she hates me. Oh, does she really? <laughs> Still, I'm sure you'll have no difficulty in satisfying her. You're clearly a man of great personal charm. And, of course, you are happily married. Oh, yes, yes. Yes, yes, I'm sure your wife considers herself to be the most fortunate of women. Well, good day, Mr. Vincent. Yes, right. And, by the way, yeah. I walked. <laughs> oh, no. Well, there goes the bathroom. What? You're not happily married. You haven't seen your wife in years. It's all right, all right. Don't rub it in. Happily married. It was all right for Uncle George. He didn't have to live with her, did he? The only time he met her was at the wedding. Ah, oh, God, she was all sweetness and light then. He never met her again after that. Never saw her again after that. None of them did. Well, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, that's right. None of them did. <laughs> they wouldn't recognise her if they fell over her. Aunt Maud wouldn't recognise her. Anyway, she's as deaf as a post. So? So, so all I've got to do is get someone to take the wife's place. Yes, but who? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Miss Jones! <laughs> she wouldn't do it. Oh, wouldn't she? Everyone's got their price, mate. <laughs> you want me to impersonate your wife, Mr. Rigsby? It's only for a few hours, you see, Miss Jones. Well, I Ms. couldn't Jones. do it. It would be wrong. It would be illegal. I mean, you're supposed to be happily married. We are happily married. She lives in Cleethorpes. I live here. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> I couldn't do it. And there's no use trying to persuade oh, 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 me. Oh, come on, Miss Jones. Come on. What do you say? Hey, what about, uh, 
What about uh, sinking your feet into the velvet luxury of our deep pile? Enjoy the sensual pleasure of our delicate fibres. Choose from our rich autumnal shades. Eh? What do you say? What do I have to do? That's better. <laughs> All you've got to do, Miss Jones, is just to act the affectionate spouse. I've got some of her old clothes downstairs. Well, you can't call me Miss Jones. Oh, no, what no. was her name? Uh, Veronica. Veronica? Oh, oh I knew there'd be sacrifices. Yes. <laughs> what was she like? Uh, what was she like? Well, she, she was, um... It's difficult to describe, really. She, she was, uh... She, the exact word evades me. Well, you must remember what she was like. Now, come on, don't be horrible. Yeah, horrible, that's it. <laughs> Did she have any trays that you may remember? Any trays? Well, she had this wooden one we used to have tea No, on. no, no, I mean... I mean characteristics. Oh, I'm sorry. She had this very... Oh, traits, yes. She had this uh, very individual way with a cigarette. Yes, she used to keep it in her mouth when she was talking. I'm sorry. Uh, 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 I remember she took it out during the service, yes. And, uh, and this very, uh, very bronchial cough. She was always on high tar, you see. Oh, I yes. can't manage that. And a uh, very, uh, very distinctive laugh. What was it like? Uh, something like a cross between a pneumatic drill and someone shooting crows. <laughs> possibly do it, Mr. Rigsby. I didn't say it would be easy, Miss yeah. Jones, but have a try. Go on, go on. She had this very robust Cockney sense of humour. You, you used to, well, uh, she used to slap you on the back to emphasise the point. Oh, he's oh, right. oh, <laughs> Mr. Rigsby. Oh, sorry. Now, that was when she was in a good mood. Yes, if she was peaked, she'd hit you around the back of the head with her handbag. Well, I'm sorry, I can't possibly do oh, it. Oh, come on, My Ms. whole Jones, nature yes. would have rebel. Have a try, come on, no. Miss Jones. I'll make it wall to wall in shag. What do you say? All right. Ah, uh, that's it. Now, try the, oh, sorry. Try the, uh, try the cigarette, Miss Jones, here. That's it, now then. Inhale deeply. That's it. Right, right. No, keep, keep it in the mouth. Oh. In the mouth, also. Yes, in, in the corner of the mouth. That's a right. robust Cockney sense of humour, remember? Wash your cock. Oh, very good. Very good. <laughs> and you've got the cock. Marvellous. <laughs> I think that's, uh, I think that's pretty well everything. Are you nearly ready, Miss Jones? <laughs> Turn round. Oh, it's, it's perfect, Miss Jones. Don't you mean Veronica? Oh, Veronica, perfect. How about how, how do you think I look? Very nice, Mr. Rigsby. Thank you. No, I can't call you that. What's your first name? Uh, uh, we needn't go to those lengths, Miss Jones. Mr. Rigsby, we're supposed to be married. What did she call you? For do everything, really. No, I mean, I mean at the beginning, when she was being affectionate. Well, we never went in for endearments very much. Not even at the beginning, no. She used to smile quietly at me, put her hand on mine and say, Now then, rat bag. No. <laughs> Call you that. Now, what's your name? Well, it's, it's, it's a rather silly sort of name. Not, not what is it? Rupert. <laughs> what? Rupert. Rupert? Yes, Rupert Rigsby. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Rigsby, you don't look like a Rupert. Well, of course I don't look like he's a little woolly bear with trousers <laughs> and a check scarf, isn't he? That's why I stopped using it. Well, I shan't. I think it's a very nice name. Now, what shall we give Maud for her teeth? Yes. What about some hot button scones? Ah, oh, no. No, no, no. I think we'd be caught in disaster with her teeth. <laughs> no, she's a martyr to wind as well, so we don't want any social disasters. <laughs> and I think it'd better be something she can dip, you know. <laughs> right. Oh, I'd better be getting off. The train will be in. Yes, unless she's coming by broom, of course. <laughs> right. Well, I think that's pretty well every... everything. Um... Perhaps we ought to get into our parts now, do you think, Miss Jones? Sorry? Perhaps a, a little kiss before I go. I beg your pardon? Oh, well, well, we've got to play man and wife, you see, in front of Miss... Well, do we have to go to those lengths? Well, I think it's quite important to get a dress rehearsal in early. And... Very well, Ru Rupert. <laughs> you know, Miss Jones, I can't help thinking of what might have been if our paths had crossed earlier, if fate had been a little kinder, you know. But it wasn't to be, I suppose, and, and now it's too late. Is it? They say it's never too late. Isn't that what they say? Yes, that seems to be what they... Well, oh, <laughs> Miss Jones, you, you've never said anything like that to me before. <laughs> a new warmth seems to have entered our relationship. <laughs> well, better get down to the station. <laughs> right. Yes. Now, Sunshine, is he in? Who? Captain Bly, the old skinflint. Or perhaps I shouldn't say that now he's coming to money. Oh, you mean Rigsby, that's his room there. Oh, Tar. You stay in here? Yes. Well, watch him. Don't take any glass beads. <laughs> you must be Aunt Maud. Stow me, do I look that old? That's what comes of being married to him. I was a beautiful girl before he got hold of me. Of course, that was years ago. But I still wake up screaming. 
Look, I don't understand. Who are you? I'm Mrs. Rigsby. Come back to rattle me chains. Right. <laughs> oh, oh, you're here. Hello, dearie. Fancy a cup of char? Or what about a drop of mother's ruin? Uh, where's Rupert? That's who I'm looking for. Oh, you must have, you must have just missed him, dear. Oh. Never mind, all girls together. Park your BTM in that chair, girl, and get stuck in. And never mind the wind, I suffer from it something chronic. Loosen your stays, girl, and get stuck in. I'm not angry. Oh, shame. Well, here, have a fag, dear. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Doctor says there'll be the blooming death of me, but I'm not bothered. You only live once, ain't that right, Maud? Who are you? I don't think I've had the pleasure. Ain't you? Must be your age. <laughs> <laughs> don't you know me? Veronica. <laughs> you change. <laughs> Was you at the wedding? I thought I was, now I'm beginning to wonder. Well, I'm not surprised, what a day. And when Rupert fell down in the aisle, laugh, I nearly bust me girdle. And you're still together? I never thought it'd last. Oh, you mean because I hit him with me bouquet? Well, he kept treading on me train, didn't he, clumsy bird? Still, he's not been too bad, mold, mat and gramble. Yeah. Where did you go for your honeymoon? <laughs> Where did we go for our honeymoon? You might well ask. Where did we go for our honeymoon? Well, where was it? <laughs> South End, wasn't it? Oh, I thought it was Blackpool. No, no. Oh, yeah, yeah. South End the first, Wheat and Blackpool the second. Oh. But to tell you the truth, girl, for... <laughs> by the end of the first week, I was past caring. Do you know what I mean, Maud? Mm. I can't get over how young you look. Love of a good man, Maud. Oh. Have you got a photo of the wedding? I thought, no, no, Maud, it was a slosher. Oh. You know, standing there in those groups, all that yeah. posing, standing there in the bleeding rain, no <laughs> film in the camera. Mm, that's funny. Yeah. Well, I've got one. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, oh, blimey. Don't I look a fright? <laughs> oh, and look, look at Rupert. He looks like the condemned man. My, how we've changed. You certainly have. You're six inches taller. <laughs> Come off it, you're not Veronica. Oh, Maud, how did you guess? It was the picture, I suppose. I don't know why I agreed to do it. She sounds a terrible woman. Oh? What's he been saying? Oh, you don't know the half, Maud. Led him a dog's life. Oh, she did, did she? And you know, she was always drawing on a cigarette. Sometimes he couldn't see the room for smoke. And then she had this terrible laugh. What sort of laugh? Well, he said it was a cross between a pneumatic drill and somebody shooting crows. <laughs> Personally speaking, I think she was a bit common. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yes. See, I only agreed to do it so that Mr. Rigsby could get the money. He had to prove that he was happily married. Happily married to that woman. Maud, I'm glad the pretense is over. I'm glad you found out. Oh, I knew you couldn't be his wife. Why? Because I am. <laughs> oh, blimey. Oh, good heavens above. <laughs> <laughs> Maud, there we are, love. There, there. Oh, Veronica sounds in sparkling form. <laughs> there we are. Come along in, my dear. Your teeth. All laid out for you there. Come along in. Here we go. There, now you sit She's down. She's not here. And uh, put her in your deaf old cow. Come on. <laughs> You sit down and dip your bread in something, love. There we are. Yes. No need to be suspicious. She'll be in in a minute. Well, of course I'm suspicious. You're hiding some attack, and always tell. Always was a, a, a shifty little devil. Ooh, I couldn't abide you. Neither could your mother come to that. I was a lovely little chap. You used to call me Sunshine. Not what I called you. I was always laughing and joking. Uncle George must have remembered. I hadn't seen him for years, but he left me all his money. Must have been gratitude. Mm, just jealous, you old bat, aren't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I suppose if I don't get the money, it all goes to you, eh? I say, I suppose... Oh, it's like talking to a post. I suppose if I don't get the money, it all goes to you. Oh, no, goes to dog home. The dog's home. <laughs> it's a waste. Oh, God, just think what I could do with that. Could travel the world, see strange, exotic places. Yeah, you could share in that, you know, Aunt Maud. I could send you postcards. What's that? I say, I could... I could, I could oh, forget it. I could have your teeth fixed up. You could have gold ones. You'd twinkle every time you smile. Yeah. <laughs> Are you trying to bribe a poor old age pensioner? Oh, it's not your stupid old trout. What was that? Uh, nothing, nothing. Well, where is she? 
I heard she'd left you. No, 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 malicious gossip about more. Just a minute. Are you coming, my precious? I'm coming, dearest. Oh, oh. 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 oh she's through there. I didn't realise. Now, you'll notice a few changes, Aunt Maud. She's lost a lot of weight, which has the strange effect of making her appear taller. Yes, it's a sort of sort of optical illusion. Yes. How's your, how's your eyesight these days? There's no wrong with my eyesight. Oh, no need to shout. There's nothing wrong with your voice either, is there? Are you coming, my dearest? I'm coming, there my she is. love. She's so affectionate there. Yeah. Now you'll remember. <laughs> oh, well, it is Veronica. Of course, it's Veronica. How are you, Aunt Maud? I thought you'd left him. No, no, no. We're as happy as two turtle doves. Ain't that right, Rupert? Oh, yes, yes. Yes, well, it's I, been bliss. I don't know how you've stuck it all these years. None of us thought it had last. We all thought it was a bad omen when wedding cake collapsed. <laughs> you don't know him. I know he doesn't look much, but underneath there's an art of gold. Oh, yeah. yes. Well, all I can say is you deserve the money, Veronica, for putting up with him all these years. You mean we get it? Aye. And if it were up to me, you'd get the George Medal for gallantry as well. Thank you. No, now no, then, no, 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 who no. was that woman? Uh, it was Aunt Maud. I mean, the one that was pretending oh, to be oh, me. That was Miss Jones from downstairs. She'll have to go. There's going to be none of that. None of what? No, kissing and cuddling and hugging while I'm around. Kissing? No, there never was. I don't know who you've come back for. you come to pick me clean, haven't oh, you? Now, Rupert, that's no way for happily married man to talk. Oh, God! Remember oh. the good times. Oh, what good times? You miss me at oh, all. miss you? You must be joking. What about me at all, you miss? Oh, God. What about my silvery laugh? Your silvery laugh? Oh, perhaps you don't oh. like my laugh. No, that's you very, don't very, think it's a cross between a pneumatic drill and someone shooting crows? Of course, and who said that? She did. Oh, but I suppose oh. she's refined. I suppose her laugh's like tingling cymbals. Oh, but then she's not... Oh, no. Oh, Not the handbag. No, no, please. How do you feel uh, now, Mr. Rigsby? Oh, I still feel a little dizzy, Miss Jones. Oh, God, that handbag gets worse. <laughs> I swear she had a brick in it. Well, what are you going to do? You need police protection. Police protection? I need the Argyle and Sutherland Islanders. <laughs> I don't think they'd stand firm either. Now, the only thing you can do in a case like this is to rely on your best friends. Oh, well, I can't possibly stay, Mr. Rigsby, not after what's happened. What? <laughs> and I can't either. That laugh makes the pen leap across the page. Oh, this is marvellous, isn't it? Desert a sinking ship at a time. Like, yes, who is it? Ah, uh, uh, Mr. Rigsby, I've yes. been looking for you everywhere. I'm afraid I've got some very bad news for you. I want you to take a strong grip on yourself, old chap. Well, what's well, happened? What is it? Well, apparently, George Rigsby never paid any income tax, so it all goes to the Inland Revenue. I'm afraid there's no money. <laughs> Which means I don't get anything. No, no, I'm afraid not. Rupert, come here! <laughs> oh, that's terrible news. Rupert! Oh, oh that's really terrible. I don't know how I'm going to break that news to my wife. <laughs> oh, it's a shocking disappointment, isn't it, Phil? Rupert, are you coming? Yes, coming, my love. Miss Jones, will you look at the time of the next train to Cleethorpe? <laughs> Veronica, my dear, just a little wordy in your ear. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.